I'm gonna show you guys behind the scenes of what they do before a car revealing. Covering up for the cupboard. More cupboards. I got security guards. Yep. A cover underneath a cover. <laughs> Shifting from one stand to the other, we didn't have time to change the colors. <laughs> so, as you know, the Nevera has been a big milestone for us. And some of you who are following our story know that everything started with a little green BMW 1984. Just like many of you are here, absolutely obsessed with cars and proper car guys, so was I my whole life. And the way for me to start was by converting an old 1984 BMW to electric. And already back then, it started with breaking records. In 2011, I used that BMW to break five FIA and Guinness World Records for the fastest accelerating car. And that's what always fascinated me about cars, like pushing the limits, developing new technologies, developing the performance and raising the bar all the time. And that's what's pushing us with Riemanns. So with the Nevera, we did quite a lot of that during this year, we call it our record-breaking year. In April, we broke 23 world records in one single day. Different acceleration records like 0 to 60, 0 to 100, quarter mile, one mile, and so on. It broke pretty much all straight line acceleration records. Then in July, in Goodwood, we broke the production car track record, uh, which is quite interesting for such a heavy car on such a small track, that you can see here behind me on the screen. And just today, we did something else quite remarkable that we have been waiting for for quite some time. But I will let our chief of green help. And the Nevera is also a lab for us, a laboratory for new technologies. So everything in the Nevera is developed for the Nevera. There is no carryover. So we had to create all of these new technologies to enable the performance that the Nevera brings to the road, being the most powerful and fast accelerating production car ever built. And we are continuing to develop it and enhance it and the customers are getting all the time updates and more, even more performance. So we don't stop here. We said it's a record-breaking year. Today is uh, the 18th of August. The year still has a few months to go, so there will be more records. Uh, you can count on that. And uh, as Emilio said, this was our first attempt at the Nürburgring. We didn't test a lot. We just went for it. It's pretty difficult to get the slot at the Nürburgring. So we are happy with the result. But, of course, we will come back and, and improve that time. To celebrate all of these records, we have decided to build a special edition of the car. As we have broken the speed record of 412 kilometers per hour, this is the Nevera Time Attack, with, uh, out of which we will build 12, because of the 412 uh, kilometer per hour record. So, if we can have a look at the car. So, this uh, edition, it will be 12 built, and this particular car is the first one that uh, is built. And we already delivered it yesterday to its customer, to Jeff Miller, who um, took delivery of the car yesterday. And we'll actually use it here on Monterey tomorrow, so you will see the car in action. Maybe if we have some time. So Jeff, congratulations on a beautiful car. Maybe if our test driver Goran has some time to teach a little bit how drift mode works and to <laughs> burn some tires tomorrow, you can see a little bit of, of tire smoke as well. So we will build 12 and all of them have been already spoken to. Um, so all 12 customers have already ordered their cars, which we are very happy about. So all of the cars are sold. And as I said, the Nevera is basically a laboratory of new technology, which we are then also applying to many other things. So we will keep continuing developing the car and expect a lot more to see from it. So have a look at the car. Later we will upload the uh, video of the Nürburgring run. It just happened a couple of hours today. Believe me, it was almost like Churchill in Second World War during the, the D-Day where he had a winning speech and a losing speech. We just had one, the winning speech, so we were quite confident we will break the record. Um, now that, yeah, have a look at the car and enjoy. Thank you. your brain. Ladies and gentlemen, T33 Spider. Oh, 
driver always wants to do. Uh, when you're designing a central driving position car like the McLaren F1 or the T50, it's very forward cabin and it's difficult to get classic proportions in those cars. They're more spaceship than motor car. Um, I grew up in the 60s loving all the sports and sports racing cars from the 60s and I just loved the proportions and as soon as I'd finished the McLaren F1 I thought one day I want to do my ultimate sort of tribute to the 60s if you like and this is it. So this is sort of classic proportions but in no way retro everything brought up to date and it's it's something that I think um, I think we've really nailed on the proportions. But even in spider form, it's still 1,100 kilos and only 18 kilograms heavier than the coupe. That's right, yeah, that's because we designed a spider first. Normally people do a coupe, take the roof off and then chuck a lot of material at it to get the stiffness back. We started with the spider, so the torsional rigidity uh, hits our target so that we protect uh, the vehicle dynamics. And the, I think the crazy st statistic for this car, the power to weight ratio is the same as the McLaren F1, even in spider form. <laughs> yeah, that, yes. that one blew me away. Um, <laughs> speaking about being blown away, I think we go from the sublime, well, to quite frankly, the ridiculous. Um, our creative director, Kev Richards, describes this car as Gordon Murray unhinged. <laughs> so guys, come up, please. This is the world debut of T50S. Can't wait to drive this one. <laughs> you get to drive it first too. <laughs> yes. That's the rule in the company. Gordon gets to drive the car first. Um, I'm ever so glad you've built this, but why? <laughs> well, I, I learned a hard lesson when I did the McLaren F1. I, I didn't want to go anywhere near racing and uh, because I didn't want to compromise the road car. We were trying to do the world's best driver's car, the F1. Uh, and then, of course, we were forced to go racing by the customers, and we raced it with some success. I was going to say it did quite well, didn't it? Yeah. And then, uh, so when we started T50, I decided I would have two separate teams and do two clean sheet of paper designs. So although this is based on and 770 horsepower, so it's not going to be slow. Even I can do those maths. That's, <laughs> that's pretty good. Do we think somewhere? I thought that would be a nice thing to do in his family were very supportive of that and we've also named each individual car after one of my Grand Prix wins on different circuits so um, they've all That's got a bit of really cool. history. That is really cool. Well ladies and gentlemen I hope you love these cars as much as we do. Thank you so much for being here. We've cut, we're keeping this nice and short. changed and evolved a lot since last year we've redesigned a lot of the mechanical components of the car the car now develops over 750 horsepower in fact we're struggling to keep it down to 750 horsepower at the moment but um, the production car will have three switchable modes 
which will allow you to drive it at 550, 650 and 750 horsepower. And on Sunday, um, our, one of our test cars, Mule 2, will be doing the hill climb at Laguna Seca. We were there last year with our, one of our speedsters and we were fortunate enough to come third in the event. So fingers crossed we're going to try and better that this year. Let me get the car unveiled for you and I'll come back to you and give you a little bit more information. Thank you very much. edition we're going to be putting out four of them limited edition of the zinger 21c this is an exciting time for us as a new company within the next couple of months we're going to be delivering cars to our first customers these are fully homologated crash homologated carb emissions homologated cars and now getting to the tribute obviously if you're an american engineer or designer you know what the SR71 Blackbird is. The Zinger 21C Blackbird Edition. But before we do so, let's pay a little attention to Iceman Blue 21C VMAX, his brother. And with that, let's unveil this beast. Rock and roll. The 21C Blackbird Edition is the highest performing version of the 21C. Channeling the inspiration of Kelly Johnson, the Skunk Works team, and embodying the Zinger spirit, our team spirit, for Kevin and me, this is our true Founders Edition. The Blackbird Edition offers the following specifications, a custom black paint job, a one of one paint, and I dare you to try and find a blacker paint in the world, You'll literally get lost in it when you look at it. We have our own lightweight vehicle package just for this vehicle, channeling the silhouette of the SR71. We have an interior which is printed titanium, just like the skin of the SR71 was, anodized to a matte black finish and a satin silver finish. And we have high modulus carbon fiber. In the rear, you'll see an exhaust which channels the energy and the design of the SR71's engines Again, a one of one for this vehicle. And perhaps most importantly for all of you, this vehicle has an increase of 100 horsepower. Within the 8021Cs, we're not adding the Blackbird Edition, the highest performing hypercar on the market, but it also embodies an instantly recognized dynamic beauty. Just as the SR71 was, when you see the SR71 in the sky, it is art or bias. But when you see the Blackbird edition or the
and are all here to see what's under the cover. So let's give them what they've been waiting for. Alois, okay. Estonia, Aloisa, lift. Here it is, shown for the first time today at the Quail, a motorsports gathering, the 2023 roof. I think that deserves a round of applause, don't you? Yeah. First and foremost, what's it called? It's called Tribute. Uh, this is a present to the 60 years of 9-11. The 9-11 has been and is the car that's the first buyer just landing yes <laughs> has been the car where everything in my life has been pivoting around it's all about the 911 and uh, after 25 years of water cooled 911s that we have been in that world of the water cooled as well and we still are of course we said we have to try it again and we have to bring back an air cooled and this is it. Is yeah. that is air cool to you part of the DNA of the 911, the true 911 spirit? It's part of the soul, you know, and uh, it's uh, something very, very special. It is the sound, the water cooling dampens the noises of the engine, but here we hear mechanical noises that are so true and so original that the true 911 lovers and those who love the air-cooled engines, they're just used to, and they're missing that. And we said, we have to bring that back. And he missed that too. Yeah. He's that. <laughs> I, think, I think a lot of people here, including probably most of you, are missing, are missing that. It's, I, I, you hear it talked about so much, don't you? Air-cooled, air-cooled, was it Luftgekühlt? Luftgekühlt is the, the big word in America, as you know. It's a complicated word to say for Anglophone people, but they love it. And uh, there's a grand hype of the Luftgekühlt, which also tells us, yes, people have a desire, they have a want, they want to feel a Luftgekühlt car again, an air-cooled. And what we are doing here from, from the technical side is something new. We are not uh, warming up the old 911 engine, the air-cooled. We are using a new concept. We have a 4-cam engine here. Whoa. and a four what? cam engine four cam engine why are we using four cams we are using four cams because each individual cam has a, a variable cam timing so we can uh, change the cam timing in order to make it friendlier to the emissions and we have also a variable valve lift so when, we get, when it gets to performance we can uh, allow more air to come into the combustion chamber by uh, opening up the valve lift. And uh, those are two very, very important items that have not been done with air-cooled engines before. And most of all, the difference is it's a three-valve technology. Two intake valves, one exhaust valve. Why one exhaust valve? Because that is the hottest side of the air-cooled cylinder head. And we want to make sure that we don't have uh, heat nests in that area, which could make a, a problem on the long run for the longevity of the engine. So this is why we have chosen three-valve technology. So you say it's not just a marketing man. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, cancel the Prius orders. This is what you need to save the planet. Uh, a trivial question, but is there a story behind the color that you've chosen for the car that we're showing today? Yes, there is. Um, it's, again, something from my romantic uh, time with the 911 of all my life when i was 20 years young i was staring at a car in this color it was mr ferry porsche's 2.2 s okay. in 1970. yeah okay that's my, it my it's that. my fault we'll have to we'll have to wrap it up before before uh, they we're not going to cut off the sound but and uh of course ladies and gentlemen that the singer press conference will begin in five minutes at 8 15 a.m at the Zinger Field Exhibition.